Well, dude, I appreciate you bringing me out here. We're at fucking Lake Nasia I appreciate you being here, bro. This is like the thing. Is, the, the, I'm excited for this one because this is like you letting me come into your stomping grounds because pretty much I never see you in slow anymore. I, I never see you anywhere outside anywhere, of AG bro. or Lake Nascimento, but yeah, dude. I mean, you you Slow let me come out talk. here. You let me bring my stuff, and always I'm ready f for an interview and just to get a little bit out of you and and hear about your life. So yeah, what what's this place mean to you? Because you come here literally every weekend, Brad. Yeah. Like Thursday through Sunday. So this place it means a lot to me. You know, like I've been coming up here ever since I was a baby. You know, I've been driving the boat since I was five years old. Pops taught me everything. Hunting, fishing. Got me through the divorce with my parents when I was in fourth grade, you know? Like, we were up here fucking Friday through Wednesday. So, like, five Every days a week? Every single week, yeah. And you'd go, you would go back home, like, Wednesday night, Thursday night, and yeah. then come back up on Friday? Mm-hmm. Damn. Did, um, and you have a brother. Yeah, I have a little brother. Do you ever kick with him? Uh, we don't really have the same interests. I mean, we do and we don't. We both like anime a lot. What's your favorite anime show? My favorite anime show right now currently would have to be, um, that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Is it good? It's pretty good, in my opinion. It's kind of like a funny, but action show. Well, and you and you. Any more questions? <laughs> you watch a lot of uh, you. Would you say you're like a big like watcher of products, TV shows, uh, movies? I would say so. Yeah. Would you say you watch it every day? Watch anime every day, or just like a movie every day, or like a TV show, anything every day. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Okay. I love movies. You know, it helps you get your mind off things. It helps you just relax. You know, when I was going sober for six months, that's all that, you know, I had was, you know, just kicking it at home, watching movies. What made you want to go sober for six months? Oh, dude, I just got out of control, man. Really? You know, sometimes the booze takes a hold of you and you can't, you can't hold it back anymore. And you are going hard for a bit, huh? I was going way too hard, man. <laughs> like, it was bad. You were waking up in the morning and just, like, sending a Snapchat. I like, was waking up in the morning, sending, up, sending Snapchats, dude, just fucking pounding bottles, bro. The thing is, you really don't give a fuck. Not really. I mean, I give a fuck about certain things. Yeah. You know, like, and going six months sober, honestly, best thing that ever happened to me, bro. Would you say now you have a little bit more, uh... Like, control and rhythm of your life back? Oh, or? 100%. Way more control and rhythm of my life back. Like, you know, I'm not feeling like shit every day. I don't feel depressed. Like, every single day, you know, it's... Sobriety helps, man. And you, uh... You're a very social person. Like, you've met... I've met, like, countless people through you, and I feel like this entire, like, late community knows who you are. Oh, 100%. You know what I mean? Knows me. yeah. Like, bro, you know, like, like, I'm not even joking, like, like, be out on the road out here, he's, like, a public icon. Like, there's, like, yeah. families and, like, moms and dads and, like, children that know this guy, and they're, like, waving to him as he, like, drives by on, like, a quad or, like, yep. in the boat or something. And I got my lake mom, my lake dad, you know, like, they ain't family by blood, but, yeah. you know, they family. Do you have a favorite uh, alcohol? Favorite alcohol, honestly, would have to be a port wine, Tawny Port. What's port wine? Port wine is uh, basically, like, it's a dessert wine, so it's a lot more sweet than regular wines. It has a hazelnutty flavor to it, and uh, it pairs well with like dark chocolate and stuff. Like some dark chocolate, like cheesecake in Las Vegas or something. Yeah, that's what you'd go for. With like homemade whipped cream and like chocolate uh -huh. sauce, caramel. 
And then, you know, always a nice cigar is nice with some port. Really? Yeah, you dip the end of your cigar in a glass of port and smoke on it a little bit, bro. Unreal. How much flavor difference you get. Do you... Are you leaving ash in the wine? Oh, no, 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 no. You dip the part uh, that before. you smoke out of uh, into the port wine. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, it's some bougie-ass shit, but... Yeah. You know, it's it's... It is what it is. Do you have a favorite, uh, like, memory out here? Or, like, crazy, crazy events that you want to dive into? Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, bet. <laughs> so, I randomly meet this one guy one night, my buddy Ray. And uh, he's an older man, like, probably in his 40s, 50s. And, you know, like, next thing you know, like, he's giving me a fifth of Jack Daniels. And he's like, this is yours. This is your bottle now. I'm like, I just met you, man. He's like, I don't care. You family now, bro. That's sick. Gave me a handle, well, a fifth of Jack. And then, you know, next thing you know, I wake up the next morning, dude, fucking quarter ounce of weed in my fucking truck. And I'm like, yo, where did I get this? And it turns out, homie ended up giving me a quarter ounce. So just giving you gifts for free. Just giving me gifts, dude. That's good. Left and right. That's nice. It was ridiculous, dude. I didn't believe it, you know? For someone to be so welcoming. Yeah. Yeah. And I've also have seen you hold people at gunpoint here. Hundred <laughs> percent, and that no, that's dope because you're. There's not t too many people like where we live in particular, Slow County. There's definite like, it's always kind of cool like meeting some like rednecks. Not, oh, yeah. I mean, would you consider yourself a redneck? You know, I feel like you guys. Kind I would of are. consider myself. Uh, I don't know what good term to put it. I'd say redneck, but at the same time, classy. Yeah. Because you got, yeah, no, that's true. Cause you guys aren't like, you guys aren't like the um, poster child redneck. You guys, but you guys like, like guns. You guys go guns. fishing. We you guys are into fishing. boating. Like, we you guys are boating. outdoors a lot. We love ATV in. Yeah. You know, I mean, shit, we've had this house since 91 before I was born and uh, the 65 acres that we go shooting on back at the property uh, my dad's dad bought it in uh, 1956 1956 damn okay yeah and, and do you guys have a house on it or anything or is it literally just bland uh, we did have a couple of trailers back in the day but after you know there was the big uh, I forgot what fire it was called but it was a pretty big fire out here, and uh, all the trailers burned down, and it was kind of sad seeing that, but at the same time, uh, we have a friend's ashes, like, who also owns the property with us, family friend, uh, his ashes are buried underneath this tree, and the fire went straight around that tree, bro. Are you serious? Yeah. Did everything else burn up around it? Yeah. Everything oh, else burned up. That tree stayed fine. Kind of like a phenomenon or whatever. Straight up a phenomenon, dude. Dude, um... How... Speaking of, like, guns and stuff, because I'm, I'm glad that uh, Bob, Bob was reading a magazine earlier, and he was talking about how there's some, uh, like, gun activist people in California, like, fighting to... Uh, uh, help people when uh, like court cases for example somebody breaks into your house you shoot them on your property because they're breaking into your shit about to rob you and probably do some other things to you and then yeah. the people the people shooting to like okay um well technical difficulties it's real it's like a hundred and 
degrees, so like it, 103 to be precise. The camera is literally melting, so like we're gonna do the best we can in terms of like getting footage and whatnot, but we'll just try and jump off where directly where we left off. But um, pretty much where I was going, B Rod's dad Bob was reading, uh, like read some shit out loud, brought it up this morning. We're like making breakfast and shit, and B Rod's dad Bobby, he's like. Yeah, like stuff in this magazine. There's uh, there's like intruders that are suing the homeowners for the homeowners shooting shooting the intruder. And I was like, that sounds like a crock of bullshit. Because the thing is, if you break into my house and you start stealing the shit that we're breaking our backs, working I mean, so yeah, hard for, you're gonna get shot. You and know, hopefully you never you're gonna die. you never know like what's what they're breaking in for. And like honestly. If they live through it, they're probably going to sue you and win the case, especially in California. But and the association you're talking about, the magazine, it's a CRPA, California Rifle Pistol Association. And they do a lot for um, gun owners in California. It just doesn't make sense to me. Like, someone can... I mean, for all we know, they could be breaking in to hog tie you and then rape your family, kill you guys, take all your shit, and leave. Like, if you break down someone's door or, like, climb through somebody's window, dude, if you have a gun, blast them away. Kill them. Honestly. Like, you, they, like that's... People are crazy. It's 2021. Some crazy, like... You gotta kill that person. Who knows to what's protect gonna your happen? Property. Yeah. To protect your property, to pre protect yourself, protect your family. You know, suing someone for that is the most ludicrous, petty, stupid thing I've ever heard. And if you're one of those people that are intruding and breaking into people's houses to steal their shit, and then you get shot for it, and then you decide to sue the homeowner, you're a fucking pussy. Agreed. And the thing is, like, that's what's dope is meeting, like, like. Meeting other gun owners, it's always like, oh, okay, like, dope, like, this person is either, like, crazy or, like, they're chill, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, and you're, you know? you're out here with some guns, and it's like, dude, like, there's, like, not everybody has guns, so it's like, yeah. it's, like, cool when you stumble across some people, and it's like, oh, shit, this guy has a gun, you, you know, know what I mean? Like, and I don't even, I don't even sleep with a loaded gun next to me, you know? I do sleep with a gun next to me. But uh, the magazine is not in the handgun. It's sitting next to it. So, like, if someone breaks into my house, I actually have to, you know, grab it, put it in, rack around. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's safer that way, too. For people that are, you know, maybe visiting, they don't know how to use a gun or something. Yeah. So, you know, it's, you know, it's always good to be a safe and responsible gun owner yeah and it's it's like it there's such a negative association with guns because there's so many like mass shootings and stuff but the thing is you can't associate people like us that have guns like not uh, pretty much what i'm saying is everybody that's a gun owner they're not always a bad person you know what yeah. i mean don't don't let this part of the population taint and ruin it for everybody else you know what ones. i mean it, it's like uh it's like let's say uh ba there's a couple basketball players um that are professionals and they and they're like really bad people and they launder money and they they kidnap people and they're in the nba that doesn't mean every single person in the nba is doing that it, it's just like a small uh, fraction and same thing with people that own guns you know like it's yeah it's you know like sleeping with a gun by you to make you feel safe at night that that's uh that's good like that you know what I mean? like do what makes you feel safe as long exactly. as you're going to be responsible you know, and, and nobody's so, going to grab it like for example one night you know i ordered doordash earlier in the day and my door doesn't close easy my front door and all of a sudden, I hear it blast open in the, at, like, 2 a.m. from the wind. And, you know, I go and I knock on my little brother Alex's door. And I'm like, hey, Alex, did you just get home? And he's like, no, I never left the house. And I'm like, okay, stay in your room. 
And you know, I I walked around the house with my 12 gauge, clearing rooms, clearing everything, making sure no one was there to harm us, making sure everything was all right. You know, no round chambered, because you don't really need to have a round chambered. And you know, like honestly, if you're pointing a gun at someone, you better be ready to kill them, because like, let's be real. You know, if someone comes into your house at night, you have no idea what they're there for. Especially if they're a stranger. Yeah. You're, uh, in, you're into fishing. Huh? You like fishing. Oh yeah, I love fishing so much. Why do you like fishing so much? Honestly, fishing just gives me that peace of mind that I need during the weekends. You know, we usually come up here Thursday to Sunday. And, you know, Friday is the prime fishing day. Not a lot of boats out. We just, you know, kick it, fish, smoke cigars, listen to some music, maybe have a few drinks. It's a, it's just a, you know, it's, it's just relaxing. It gives you that peace of mind. And, you know, we don't kill the fish. We catch and release because, I mean, well, honestly, it's just because I don't like freshwater fish. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, I mean, it's, that's, I'm stoked that you're into fish. I don't fish. I'm honestly, I'm not into fishing. I think it's like one of the most boring things ever, but like, obviously like we need that contrast. That's why I'm stoked that you fucking fish just so I can ask you these questions. Yes. You know what I mean? Like I would rather, bro, I'd literally rather just take a nap and like sip on like a, my mixed drink while you guys fish yeah that's you know I mean? chill and we're all still having a good time you know we're just relaxing enjoying the sun enjoying the lake you know sometimes we got some eye candy out there you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know it's crazy what 85 <laughs> miles will do you know like Ignore me. you're in slow or ag you know that area then you come up here and it's just like boom 30 50 degree temperature changes honestly i like it i like the heat a lot i love the heat i love the heat so much you know you sweat everything out kind of de detoxifies you it's well the thing is like there's a ton of people that love 70 to 80 degree weather and don't get me wrong like that is fire weather like yeah. that is t-shirt board short weather 100%. thing is i like taking it up another like 10 to 20 degrees exactly, just because dude. when it's 90 to 100 which is my ideal temperature 90 to 100 my ideal temperature i fucking love it same my ideal reason, temperature 95 degrees dude let's go let's fucking go it's perfect it's, dude like it's not too hot to go on a boat ride it's not too hot to chill outside you know like it's just chill when there's wind that blows you down at 90 to 100, you're chilling. It's not going to be too cold because it's so hot outside and you're, yeah. you're going to be able and to, half like... half the time, you know, we're soaking in the lake or the pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, when it's 70 to 80 and you get hit by a gust of wind, it's like, oh, shit, like, I got to put on a, a windbreaker now. That's why, like, that's why it's, like, 90 to 100, my ideal temperature. I love 90 to 100. I agree on that 100%. <laughs> You know, like, we'll come, we'll come up early, you know, start putting the boat out on early, you know, early April, February, and, uh, we have to wear, like, socks and fucking jackets and pants, or else you're gonna freeze your ass off, and, I mean, it's still, like, 70, but, like, you know, it's cold. Yeah. Because it's a whole different, like, you know, 70 up here is cold compared to 70 and slow is, like, pretty warm. Do you have a best friend? I do. Honestly, the best friend I have would probably be our fan man. Okay, weird. And you guys have known each other for a while, yeah? Yeah, we've gone through some shit together. Always had each other's backs, you know. Really? We've had our ins and our outs. We've had our falling outs, you know. But 
it all comes back to the same thing, you know? We're yeah. best friends. And he will be the best man at my wedding. <laughs> you, um, you're from Slow. Like, you grew up here. Born at Sierra Vista Hospital, San Luis Obispo. And, you're, and you went to AG High School? Went to AG... Well, I went to Catholic fucking school from kindergarten to eighth grade. Are you serious? Yeah, it was a small school. I had a class of 35 people. That's why you like, like... And then, Partying. and then next thing you know, I'm at AG High School, and there's like two thousand people attending that school. And you were throwing parties. I I didn't really start throwing parties until I would say like my junior, senior year. But the parties I threw were legendary. Bob would go out of town, and he'd have hella heads come over. Yeah, and he knew. I got in trouble, you know, of course, because I didn't tell him, but he knew I was going to throw a party anyway. But, you know, he was like, dude, just tell me. Just be real, straight up. That's hard. He's like, if you're going to throw a party, I don't mind. Just let me know. Don't have any sketchy people at my house. And, you know, one time I threw a party and, uh, you know, someone went into my dad's uh, fucking bathroom, not bathroom, closet. closet, yeah, he went into his closet and stole a $750 watch and a no. $1,500 gold band wedding ring, fuck that, and a bunch of collectible coins, yeah, that's stupid, and you know, like, that's so fucked, I partially knew who did it, you know, I knew who to contact to find out about who did it. So I contacted said person, and uh, said person, you know, told me straight up. He's like, yeah, he has that, and he took that. And he was like, he's at my house right now. I'll tell him to go outside. And, you know, my dad kicked me out of the house because of this. Are you serious? Yeah, he kicked me out of the house, so I was like, you know, I'm... I'm walking down on the Mesa, you know, by myself, and I get a call from my homie, and he's like, hey, what's up, Brad? And I'm like, bawling my eyes out. Yeah. You know, I'm like, dude, my dad just kicked me out of the house. Someone stole a watch and, like, a bunch of collectible coins and a gold band wedding ring. And, uh, you know, homie comes, comes over, picks me up, grabs me a 40-ounce... Of fucking, he grabs me a forty of a. I don't, I don't remember. It was some cheap ass beer, Mickey's. I think it was Mickey's. Yeah, grabs me a forty of Mickey's, and uh, like a gallon of water. He comes and picks me up, and he's like, "Hey, like, so did you find out who stole all the stuff?" I'm like, "Yeah, I found out." And then, you know, they all knew I was, like, a good boy, you know, not, like, a gangbang or anything, like, just, like, a straight-up real dude. And, uh, I tried to get out of the car when, uh, when we went to the per said person's house, you know, to get the stuff back. And they were all like, no, Brad, dude, just sit in the car, we don't want you getting involved in anything bad. You're too good for that. And, you know, next thing you know... I mean, I got the watch back, but nothing else. But, I mean, you know, still, it got me back into my house. Just the watch, not the wedding ring? Yeah, I mean, the wedding ring wasn't really... Parents were already divorced. It was just more of a... It was just more of a... Is, bro, holy shit, there's respect. money. We, even though we hang out with dirtbags, we've always had the most respect. Like, I know all of my friends would steal from any fucking party they go to, but they would never steal from me. Like, I can count on them to watch out for me. Yeah. Like, it's wrong. We hung out with dirtbags, but they would never do us dirty. That's the thing. It's a respect thing. It was, it was more of like, me and, uh, me and my boy were, uh, you know, we weren't gangbangers or anything, you know, but Nobody's we, gang bangers. we hung we out with, we hung out Nobody with gang. like, but we also hung out with, you know, sketchy-ass people. We hang out with dirty people. You know, we hung out with some gangbangers from Ochano. Yeah, that's not... But, you know, like, they always had... They, 
they were, you know, not really gangbangers, I wouldn't say, but, you know, they were hard. You know, they were like... They just lived the life that all the white people around us didn't live. Yeah, they lived the life that so, no none of us lived, you know? like They, they lived a harder them, life. But they were our friends. But they were our they friends, were, and they respected us, and we respected them. every day, stealing from people at parties, they'd never think twice to double-cross us. And, you know... Still to this day, I can call those people up and be like, "Hey." But still to this day, you don't trust them. That's a fact. Like, I can I can call someone up and like I'm like, "Hey, you know, I got a problem. Can you help me handle it?" And you know, they got my back, Tandem. no matter what. Yeah, I don't, I don't like all that. Like, I, I don't like it when you have an event or like a mass sum of people over to your house or your friend's house and they're like they're already taking that risk by having the event and the thing is people are stealing yeah it's you know what i mean it's like, never good that's not good because now the thing is now you have less people that want to throw a party like you it's they just got gone. stole from Sorry. like it it just it made it to where well, like, you know, I threw another party after the party that all oh, the stuff got stolen from. And the guy that stole said watch and other things tried to show up. You know, he came into the house. Next thing you know, one of my homies is holding the dude by the throat up against the wall. He's like, you're not allowed in here. Get out. And then the homie tried to come up to me, and he's like, hey. He's like, hey, like, someone said I couldn't be here. And I'm like, yeah, no, you can't. You stole from me last time you were here. Like, you need to leave now. And, you know, he took a while to get him to leave, but he eventually left. One thing I've noticed about those people is they always, they do, like, really fucked up shit like that. Like, stealing from someone the person getting stolen from they're not like present to um are we still recording yeah you can, okay. sorry <clears throat> where they're not present to defend the things being stolen from they're not, like so those objects and those items are just getting stolen yeah like it's it's stolen. like and it's extremely damaging because now you're preventing a whole society and a whole community from growing and then the thing is that I've also noticed is people that are sailors, they're a lot of bad stuff starts to happen to them and they're like they'll put it on their story like oh my god like why does this happen to me like all the time like i swear Dude, i can never get ahead in life and it's like bro i promise you karma will keep catching up to you because you are a bad fucking person yeah like you like the reason that your life sucks right 100%. now is because you're stealing people's shit. It's because you put 12 yourself months ago in that you stole people's shit. Know? Like now now it's like okay like, like you know like it's I don't know it's No one puts you in that place but yourself. Yeah. I don't I'll like say it. that the same about fucking me being out of control drinking, you know. No one put me in that place except for myself. Do you uh do you miss uh do you miss Lex? I miss it when Lex used to come up here. Yeah, definitely, dude. Dude, she got a boyfriend. Yeah, that's what I heard. She got a boyfriend. Dude, dude I remember. a lot of people got wiped up, bro. Dude, we went, on, we went on a booze cruise one night, dude, with, it was just me and Lex and, like, some other people that live up here, and, you know, it was, like, fucking 11 o'clock at night, and we're out on the pontoons, you know, just cranking up the music. We got the rope lights, you know, it was, it was a good time. So I definitely B-Rad. miss her. Do you miss being B-Rad? I feel like you are B-Rad right now. Or no? Nah, B-Rad was a interesting fella. I'll tell you that much. By the way, for those who do not know, B-Rad is my drunk uh, alter ego that comes out. And uh, I don't miss it at all, honestly. You know, it was fun while it lasted, but... It, it caught up to me and got me in some trouble and, you know, like, so I don't miss it. You had sex with a grown woman. Are we allowed to talk about that? Um. <laughs> yeah, let's just not get too big into the details. But yeah, I did. 
You had sex with a grown woman, and her husband watched you do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, her husband helped you do it. Yeah. It was, a, it was an interesting But night. it was, like, it was dope. Like, everyone was chill about it. Everybody wanted it to happen. And you, know, you guys are friends. It was just, friends. like, whatever. And, you know, now she's trying to hook me up with her daughter. Are you serious? Yeah. Dude. <laughs> was it a... She was experienced. Right? Or no? Yeah. Really? So you were just... Dude, honestly, best head I ever had in my life. So you were just ready. You were... You you got took it on a joyride. Basically, took it on a joyride. Yeah. I'd put it in those terms. Exactly. Dude, there's some people that cannot and refuse to have sex with people that are, like, decades older than them. And I can see why. Don't get me wrong. I can definitely see why. Yeah, I can see why, yeah. But at the same time, it's like, yo, like... Honestly, it's a good d- experience Dabble. Dabble a little bit. Dabble like, a little <clears throat> bit, you know? Get yourself out there. Find out what you like, what you want. Yeah. You know? Dude, the last night we were talking about how some people, uh, they, they will not... Oh, okay, I think we got to... Well, we're coming back. Camera yeah. just melted no, again. I think she died. Just... Okay, we're back in action. Sorry, shit keeps dying. It's literally like melting hot right now. Yeah. In a we're, good way. We're, we're sweating. But the camera doesn't like it. The camera gets a little, uh, little um, mad. Um, in my shorts. Downstairs on my bed. Um. Yeah. So to back on the topic about older women. You know, I actually prefer older women because, you know, I was raised around hanging out with a lot of people that are older than me, and, you know, I've been hanging out with a lot of people that are, you know, older than me, like 30s, 40s, 50s, and up, and, you know, I've got this just mindset and, like, I don't know how to put it, you know, like, they aren't down for, like, stuff that like I like to do because you know they haven't matured enough to experience things like that so I that's I do prefer older women because you know no 20 year old girl is gonna know what she's talking about when it comes to like wine really unless she went to school for it or like cigars or you know just like in general everything if you think about it so you're you're saying you know a bit about cigars and wine and that's a that's a deal breaker for you if they don't know anything about that stuff uh it's not a deal breaker you know it's like i would just i like to have a more mature woman you know not not a child not like you know child child but like not a girl that is, you know, like, in her 20s just trying to party. Do you think your ex-girlfriend is going to watch this? Um, that would be, that would be funny. <laughs> I would kind of hope so. The thing is, you want to be in a relationship. Yeah, Like, 100%. you want a girlfriend, I want right? a girl. I want a wife. Right now, you want a wife? I mean... You'd get married right now? I wouldn't get married right now. You know, I'd, you know, get to know the girl... You know, get to know her family, and then maybe, you know, if I'm vibing, I'd marry a chick. But, like, I want to get married probably in my mid-30s, you know, when I have all all my goals done. Yeah. Because, you know, you got to work on yourself before you can have others in your life. Do you want to have children as well? Yeah, I really want a son to carry on the Elliot name. Really? That's like a big thing for you? That's a really big thing for me. I want a son to carry on the Elliot name. Because, you know, if I have a daughter and she gets married, she's going to take another dude's last name. Why do you think people care about that so much? Like, oh, like the family lineage, this one runs deep, we have to continue this. I think it's just legacy. Really? Yeah. Like, yeah. uh, B-Rod wants to have a son so he can carry on the Elliot legacy. Now it's like, like, 
why do you think that's so important to like keep the family lineage going you know because low-key sometimes i'm like because i kind of don't want i mean i don't think i'm gonna have kids you know i can yeah. i can almost guarantee you i'm not gonna have kids unless something crazy happens it, you know what i mean so like mm-hmm. at the same time it's like fucking who cares yeah, mainly, who cares about mainly, you know it's lineage, a legacy you know? you know like pops has owned this house since 91 we've had the property since god knows how long and i want to give the same that he gave to me to my children and i don't want any of it going to another family yeah i want all of it to stay in the family and then you've been doing some, uh, you've been doing some, like, raffles lately regarding, like, shoes and shit? Uh, yeah. How did you get into that? So, one of my buddies, he started up a business, and he, um, buys, like, Nike Dunks and, like, a bunch of, you know, swagger stuff, like Supreme clothes, everything that sells for a higher retail price, and he'll do raffles, you know, like thirty bucks per person. Yeah. And um, you know, I mean, I've gotten a lot of shit out of it for free. You know, just not really for free, but it was. It's it's a growing business. You recently just got some super dope Nikes. Yeah, and some pretty sick Vans too. I got the Nike Dunk SB Hawaii's and the um, Vans Gossy Supreme Collab half cabs. And then uh, one one of like the last like main subjects I wanted to bring up just because we're kind of on a time frame. Uh, last night when we were cruising around, like we were talking about like like girls and shit, like couple things that have happened like recently and whatnot and then I think it was Noah but he was like yeah like it's kind of crazy how some people get into a relationship before they've had sex with that person and like to me that's just like I feel like I've had this conversation a million times but it is kind of interesting how how people um do the boyfriend girlfriend thing first before even establishing sexual chemistry yeah I think you need to have sexual chemistry to have a healthy relationship why because that's part of a relationship some people there's a lot of people that get like really touchy on that subject you know like they don't want to talk about sex they consider it extremely sacred extremely religious and extremely uh, like Oh my god, like this is the only thing this person is looking for. I mean, I'm I'm religious, but you know, I'm not strictly religious. Do you believe in God? I do. Nice. And, you know, I pray every once in a while. It you know, just kinda helps you take your minds off things. Helps you get something out of your system. Just like seeing a therapist. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to bring up before we dip and start getting ready for the nighttime adventures? Uh, the concert? Uh, yeah, I fucking hate bees. You hate bees? Yeah, I'm scared dude. to shit of them, dude. Do you like wasps more or bees? Dude, honestly, bees more than wasp. You like bees more than wasps? A hundred percent. Wasp sting hurts way worse. I think they bite you. They bite you. And then a bee stings you, and then they're, like, done. Yeah. And I'm partially allergic to them. To wasps? Or bees? Bees. But you like them more than wasps? Yeah. Okay. Alright, dude. Well, fucking thanks for having me come out here. Thanks for having, you know, me interview you and whatnot. You know, we, we got some good, fun, quick content on, you know. it's it's yeah. It's been a pleasure, and I, I hope... Bob eventually decides to come on, you know. Yeah. Maybe he'll watch this and be like, "All right, like let's let's, let's run it." Oh, I hope he does not watch this. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Peace. Yeah. Thank you.
Thank you for having me, Laser. You, you, you.